All right, welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about what are nucleotides and nucleosides and a very easy way to draw them all. I made a lifetime total of $35.87. All right, so you're probably wondering, what is an easy way to draw all this crap on, you see on screen? And I'll be honest, for the longest time, I was also thinking the same thing. Because it isn't easy. I mean, I, I made a way that's easy, but, okay, that's, okay. I want to tell you something. The proper way of doing this and memorizing all these molecules here and how every single bond is to draw them 50,000 times, right, on a piece of paper. That's how you're going to remember. But I know my students. And my students watch my videos last minute before a test. So you don't have time for 50,000 drawings. So that's why I compiled a step-by-step -step way of getting all of them done. Now, I must admit, when I took biochemistry and organic chemistry, or molecular biology, I did not need to memorize them. I didn't. I, mean, I did not need to memorize how to draw them. I should. I should. I should specify. I had to memorize what they look like. But might as well do it, right? Like I'm taking the MCAT, so you kind of need to know how to draw it. But let's begin. What are nucleotides and nucleosides? Okay, our DNA and RNA are made up of three main components: a pentose sugar. A nitrogenous base, which you should know as A's, the G's, the C's, the T's, and the U's, which is all this. And a phosphate group. If the molecule contains all three components, it is considered a nucleotide. If the molecule just has the pentose sugar and the nitrogenous base, then it's called a nucleoside. So basically, if it does not have the phosphate group attached to it, it's a nucleoside. We could think of these nitrogenous bases as puzzle pieces. We have purines and pyrimidines. And they basically join together to form DNA or RNA. All right, so let's talk about purines and pyrimidines. Those are the two classes of nitrogenous bases. Here, right here, is our pentose sugar. This is a default on every single. Uh, nitrogenous base, all, the entire nucleoside, all the nucleosides you see here, this pentose sugar is the default. It always looks like that, except there's one exception. What changes is this, which is the nitrogenous bases. These are the A's, these are the G's, the, you know, the C's, the T's, the U's, okay? It's this part right here that all changes. And this is what people struggle with, is how do I memorize where the nitrogens go, where the oxygens go, Hydrogens, if there are any, what, would, what do we do with that, okay? Now, on the side here would be the phosphate group. I did not include it here. I'm going to include it later on in the video. There's a reason why. Okay. Now, purines have a double ring thing going on here. A male and a female, basically. Companions. Two rings. Pyrimidines have one. Now, they both have two nitrogens inside their rings. So the reason they are called purines and pyrimidines is because this is a purine group. This is a purine group. Not, without the stuff you know, attached on the outside, the inside, this is the ring part itself is a purine. If it has two rings. If you're just one ring here, like this, this is a pyrimidine. It's a pyrimidine group. That's why it's called that. Now let's talk about the structure of the nucleosides, DNA versus RNA. When talking about DNA, adenosine binds with thymidine and cytidine with guanosine. Now you're probably wondering, where, why are these names different than this? This is adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine, and uracil. This is probably what you're most used to, this name. But where is this adenosine coming from, this thymidine coming from, cytidine, guanosine? Okay, when you talk about the nitrogenous spaces alone, it's adenine. But if you include everything, it becomes adenosine. Thymine, when we're only talking about the nitrogenous spaces, thymine. If you include everything in it, it's thymidine. Same with cytidine and guanosine. 
So it's very important to know the names because this is a, a very I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. This even com you know, uh messed me up when I was taking uh when I was in enrolling in courses when I was in college. Uh, because no one really explains why the names change. People just think it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. I mean, it's part of it. But yeah. yeah we're talking about RNA. Thymidine gets replaced with uridine and bonds with adenosine. So let's talk about DNA first. So A's always match up with the T's. So adenosine always matches with thymidine. G's and C's go, to, go together. But when talking about RNA, the T's just go away. They go bye-bye. And they get replaced with U. So A bonds with U and G bonds with C. There's also a very key difference that a lot of people do not know about. Or they just look over it. And you will get this wrong on an exam. If your professor asks you to draw the structure of adenosine for RNA, you do not draw this. You have to draw this. And the difference is there's an extra OH group here on the bottom. So if your professor asks about any of the RNA nucleotides to draw, you must include the OH, the second OH. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So it's missing a deoxy group, which is Hydroxyl. That's another way of saying hydroxyl. It's missing one. It's missing it. RNA is not ribonucleic acid. It's not, the deoxy is not there. That is why RNA has an extra OH. So if your professor, once again, asks you to draw the structure of an RNA nucleotide, either, you know, the ad ad adenosine, thymidine, or no, it's not thymidine, sorry, uridine, cytidine or guanosine, you must include the OH. But if you're only talking about DNA, then this is fine. You don't need to include the OH bond, you know, here. That is a very key difference. And a lot of people, I've seen a lot of students get points off. Okay, let's do the actual step-by-step -step on drawing the nucleotides. So here's step one. Draw a flat-looking pentagon with the oxygen on top. So on top of the pentagon will be a bonded oxygen. Okay, so you'll have four carbons and then an oxygen at the top. Add an OH group on carbon number three. If asked to draw the RNA version, like I said earlier, you must add the OH group on carbon number two, which would be here. So far, so good, right? On the side, draw a phosphorus bonded to four oxygen atoms. So basically a, a P surround with a lot of O's around it. Four O's. One of the oxygens will be double bonded. Now from the single bonded oxygen with no charge, so the one without the charge, draw an elbow connecting the phosphate group to your sugar on carbon number four here. So I'm just gonna make sure this is carbon number four. So one, two, three, four. So you're gonna draw an elbow. So a bond going this way and this way, and it bonds the oxygen, this entire phosphate group. And we're already halfway done. Can you believe that? It wasn't that pretty simple so far. I mean, it's going to get much more difficult, but yeah. Okay. Now let's talk. Let's start with the nitrogen spaces. I suggest that you start with ad, um, adenine. Because we can work our way to building the other ones. But just know adenine and guanosine. If you can know those two, you are set. So it's a little bit challenging, but you need to draw a five carbon ring side by side to a benzene a ring. So you'll notice there's a five carbon ring here with, a, with one double bond and then draw a benzene ring adjoining to it. So connecting to it. Now, what you're going to do is every other carbon besides the middle carbons that join this rings together, you're going to erase the carbons and draw nitrogens instead. So replace it with nitrogens. When you get to the top of the benzene ring, draw an NH2 instead. So here, 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 and here, every other carbon. So I just erase the carbon here, the here, here, and here, and drew a nitrogen instead. 
and at the very tippy top of the benzene ring, draw an NH2. If you can do this, you're, you're completely fine for everything else. This is adenine. We're done. We already did one of them. This is adenine. Now here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna take the NH2 group you just draw, Drew, and move it to the bottom carbon on the six membered ring. There's only one other carbon you can put this onto, right? So put it on that carbon. And you replace the NH2 with the double bonded oxygen. And there's a lonely nitrogen here, which we're gonna add a hydrogen to. If this is guanine, so this is guanine now. This is the hardest one. If guanine is by far the hardest one. If you can just remember just to move this over, put an oxygen and a hydrogen, then you're set. Because adenine is basically an NH2 group on a purine. Okay, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take the guanine we just made and erase the five-membered ring completely. So just basically, oops, Take all of this crap out. Erase it. We're done with it. And all you're going to do is reverse the positions of the oxygen and nitrogen. The NH2 and the oxygen. So just flip-flop these. Okay? And remove the hydrogen. If you can do this, this is cytosine. Not too bad, right? Just erase and revert in a way. Or, um, yeah. Erase and swap. That's all cytosine is. And think about this. Guanine and cytosine bond together, right? They're pairs. So just think about it. To, to guanosine, you just erase part of it to get cytosine and swap the groups. You're going to go back to guanine and erase the five-membered ring, just like usual. Now all you need to do is take the NH2 and replace it with a double bond on oxygen. So get rid of the NH2. And that is uracil, which is for RNA. Now the last step is take the uracil and add a methyl group to the top left carbon, and that's thymine. So I just added a methyl right there to make thymine. And that's it. That's all the nitrogen spaces. So it's not too bad, you just got to do this, you know, over and over again. Now you need to connect your, car your sugar to the bottom most nitrogen of your purine or pyrimidine. So whatever it is, so uracil, thiamine, guanine, cytosine, adenine, whatever it is, take the most bottom left nitrogen that there is. So if you're, it's a purine, right, you're, we're looking at this nitrogen. If it's a pyrimidine, we're looking at this one, the bottom most nitrogen and simply draw a line connecting to carbon one on your sugar. And you just basically drew your nucleotide there. Now this bond here is very important. It's called a glycosidic bond. You should really know that. And that's it. I don't know what else to say. We're done. Now my next video is gonna be on how these bond together. Ooh, it's not that hard. Um, but yeah, okay. Until next time, oh, wait. one thing, if you found this video helpful, like and subscribe, and leave a comment. And, and that is it. All right, thanks, bye.